Now, let's get started by reviewing the core principles of pharmacodynamics. Pharmacodynamics is the study of the relationship between drug concentration in the body and the physiological response to that concentration of drug. In essence, pharmacodynamics is the study of what the drug does to the body. There are two key principles to keep in mind. First, the dose of the drug is directly linked to the magnitude of the body's response to that drug. A basic premise underlying pharmacology is that for a given dose of drug, there will be a given biological response that is directly proportional to the given dose. The second key principle is that drugs act through receptors. Thus, it is critical to understand the types of interactions between drugs and receptors, which leads us now to a discussion of enzyme kinetics, since interactions between a drug and receptor rely on similar kinetics. An understanding of pharmacodynamics is rooted in an understanding of enzyme kinetics. As shown in this first graph, the V max is the maximum rate of reaction and is directly proportional to the enzyme concentration. K sub M indicates the affinity of the enzyme for the substrate in question. A lower Km indicates a higher affinity and vice versa. When plotted on a logarithmic scale, as shown in this second graph, the slope of the line equals Km divided by V max. The farther the x-intercept is to the left, the weaker the Km. Similarly, the higher the y-intercept, the lower the Vmax. If the lines of two different drugs cross each other, these two drugs are competing for the same enzyme. If the lines do not cross, they are not competing. Enzyme inhibitors may be competitive or non-competitive. Competition refers to competition between the normal substrate for the enzyme and the inhibitor in question. Competitive inhibitors will be similar to the natural substrate, may be displaced by increasing concentrations of substrate, they will bind the active site of enzymes, they have no effect on Vmax, but they will increase Km. This is in contrast to non-competitive inhibitors, which do not resemble the substrate, are not displaced by increasing substrate concentration, and do not bind the active site. Non-competitive inhibitors will decrease, not increase, Vmax, and they have no discernible effect on Km. The action of drugs and enzymes is similar to that of drugs at their receptors. We can describe receptors as the components of a cell or organism that interact with a drug and initiate the chain of events that lead to the drug's observed effect. In this respect, they are not only important in pharmacology, but also in endocrinology, immunology, and molecular biology. In particular, receptors determine the relationship between the dose or concentration of a drug and its pharmacological effect. They determine the drug selectivity and are responsible for both agonist and antagonist activity of drugs. Coupling is the term used to describe the process that links the drug occupancy of receptors to the pharmacological response. The efficacy of coupling is determined by the initial conformational change in the receptor and the biochemical events that transduce receptor occupancy into cellular response. 
The basic premise underlying pharmacology is that for a given dose of a drug, there will be a given biological response that is directly proportional to the given dose. Given that drugs act through receptors, the relationship between the given dose and the observed response is linked by the interaction of the drug with a specific receptor in a phenomenon called the dose response. At low doses, the effect of a drug will increase as the concentration increases in most systems. As the dose increases, the response increment reduces until a point where no more increase in drug effect is seen with an increased concentration. This is commonly referred to as the plateau. Dose response curves are very useful when examining how a drug acts in the body. As we will discuss in the next few slides, dose response curves provide information on the type of action the drug has at its receptor as well as providing information on how safe a drug is at varying doses. Agonists initiate changes in cell function through their actions at receptors, producing effects of various types. Agonists have a specified potency, which is the range of doses over which a chemical produces increasing responses. An agonist potency depends upon their affinity, which is the tendency to bind to receptors, and efficacy, the ability to initiate changes once bound. The best way to illustrate the different types of actions of agonists is by comparing dose-response curves. As seen in this dose-response curve, a full agonist produces maximal effect and has high efficacy. In contrast, a partial agonist produces a lower response at full receptor occupancy than full agonists, and as a result, it has intermediate efficacy. It is important to note that while a partial agonist has lower efficacy, its potency, which again is the amount needed to produce a given effect, may be higher lower, or equal to the potency of a full agonist causing the same effect, as potency and efficacy are independent of each other. In contrast, antagonists prevent agonists from activating receptors. They are classified as reversible competitive, irreversible, or non-competitive depending on the strength of their action at the receptor. The best way to illustrate the different types of actions of antagonists is by comparing dose-response curves. This first case is reversible competitive antagonism, which shifts the dose-response curve to the right, decreases potency, and increases the EC50. As you can tell by looking at the graph, it takes a higher concentration of agonist to overcome the effects of the antagonist, but when it does, the maximal effect is still the same as with the agonist alone. The second case is the non-competitive antagonist, which decreases efficacy of the agonist and shifts the curve downward. If you can imagine what is happening, as antagonists occupy the receptors and refuse to move, antagonists have fewer receptors they can occupy, and thus they cannot cause as great of an effect. The therapeutic index, or TI, gives a relative measure of how safe a drug is. TI equals the LD50, which is the dose toxic to 50% of the population, divided by the ED50, the dose effective, in 50% of the population. This can be memorized using the abbreviation TILE for TI equals LD50 divided by ED50. Safer drugs have higher TI values.
In summary, pharmacodynamics is the study of what the drug does to the body. There are two key principles to keep in mind. The dose of the drug is directly linked to the magnitude of the body's response to that drug. A basic premise underlying pharmacology is that for a given dose of a drug, there will be a given biological response that is directly proportional to the given dose. This is known as the dose response. The second principle to remember is that drugs act through receptors. Now let's test your understanding of this material with a clinical challenge question. The two lines on this graph represent the kinetics of two different drugs. What information correctly describes the graph? A. The drugs are not competing. B. The drugs are competing for the same enzyme. C. Drug A has a higher Vmax than drug B. D. Drug B has a lower Vmax than drug A. E. Neither drug is causing inhibition of the enzyme. If the two lines of two different drugs cross each other, these two drugs are competing for the same enzyme. Thus, the answer is B, the drugs are competing for the same enzyme. The higher a drug crosses the y-intercept, the lower its Vmax, which is why answers C and D are incorrect.